first thing we need to get out to sea is a research vessel. Here's a picture of a German research ship called the Polarstern. Stern means star in German, so this is actually named after Polaris, the pole star. And you get a sense for how large this ship is if you notice that there is a person standing at the railing right there, so quite a large research vessel. A really beautiful ship to do work on. And this is kind of a good thing because it might take you a week or a couple of weeks before you even get out to your research area, and you might be on this vessel for something like six weeks or even two months. So having a, a really great um, home for that period of time is a, is a nice thing. This is the Gould. It's one of the U.S.'s two Antarctic research vessels that I was also out on. Still quite a large vessel. Imagine yourself standing at that railing right there. A little bit smaller than Polarstern, though. And here's a third vessel I've been out on. This is the Ron Brown, another U.S. research ship through um, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA. Um, so, you know, a somewhat smaller boat for you to be out on at a month, uh, for a month at a time. Uh, still a really great vessel to be doing work on. And so sort of seeing this ship surrounded by water gives you a sense of your scale in, in comparison to the ocean that you're out there to study. And that may make you think twice about getting into a really small boat like this Zodiac, going out, leaving the safety of your island home, if you will, and going out to do some research right on the ocean interface, kind of right up close and personal. Most of the time, the research that I've been doing hasn't required going out in these little boats. We deploy our gear off right off the ship itself. There's definitely something profound about the experience of being out in the center of the ocean, seeing nothing but ocean around you, 360 degree horizon, often really beautiful, even sort of humblingly beautiful environs that we are lucky enough to be doing work in. Just like the work on land, you know, you go out to the, to the deck and you think, I'm at work, how is this possible? There are these surprising moments of tranquility, even when you can't see the water. So here's a picture from Antarctica with all this ice on top of the ocean. That is not land underneath. That is still uh, the, the southern ocean. And these moments of, of quiet, calm beauty are all the more precious because the research work on a vessel is pretty much nonstop. You're usually on watches up for specific hours um, and getting as much science done as you possibly can. Now, unfortunately, nature isn't always benign. Um, here is a less beautiful picture, um, humbling in a different way. And again, if you put yourself at the railing and it would come up to sort of stomach height, a little higher than waist height, you can sort of calculate how massive that wave is. This was in the middle of a storm. Very shortly after this picture was taken, uh, we shut down all of our scientific operations. In fact, we weren't even allowed outside on the decks. They l literally locked us into the protected internal parts of the ship until we rode out this storm. Um, so there is sort of a different kind of fierce and powerful beauty as well. Working in the ocean while being on the ocean, surrounded by the ocean, has definitely given me a different perspective. It makes you see things differently. And there's been sort of a, a resetting of scale, in a sense. The ocean is so big, and it's so powerful. And I actually take an odd sort of comfort in that, that I wasn't expecting to feel. You know, I always say there's really no use striving against the ocean. There's no use trying to conquer it. The ocean will always win. Instead, if we work with it, if we try to think of ourselves as more a part of it, and if we try to work as a part of it, that's when it really opens up its secrets to us. So what does the work of being at sea really look like? Well, the answer is, you know, a hundred different things, but to give you a, a little sense of the kind of work that I've been lucky enough to do, here's some kind of um, working life at sea. Uh, again, handy humans in the picture for scale. We are deploying here what's called a mock nest. Um, it's a series of nets housed in this black metal frame that we are in the process of putting over the, the back end of the ship into the water, and this will go out and collect a bunch of samples for us.
So as scientists, we assist the ship's crew in guiding the gear into the water safely. So these are some of my colleagues. You'll notice uh, a person, a scientist with a guide rope, helping to get this piece of gear uh, into the water properly. And I really love being part of this gear deployment and gear recovery team. Now you'll notice, however, um, that the rail at the back of the ship is open, right? So we can get this gear into the water. And if I shift around to a sort of posterior view, if you will, you get a sense of how high off the ocean surface we are standing right there at the back gate of the ship. So I, like I said, I love being part of the crew who helps get the gear into the water safely and recovers it safely, but needless to say, I take lots of deep breaths, and I always know exactly where my feet are. Imagine doing this work as the ship is, um, you know, rolling on those ocean waves. Hopefully not like that big storm, we wouldn't be doing work like that in, in bad conditions. So here are those nets looking off the, the stern of the ship. Um, safely in the water, going down into the depths to collect our samples, and they'll come up maybe an hour later, depending on the water depth, full of um, incredible organisms for us to study and work on uh, and learn more about. We find new things in the ocean literally every time we put a sampling device down. Um, every time we collect a sample, there's something that not only have we on the ship never seen before, but no one in the world has ever seen it before. It's a really, really incredible experience. Another thing that I find really um, interesting about doing oceanic work is that oftentimes some of the most memorable organisms might not be the ones that you set out to learn about. Dolphins like these often somehow find research vessels. They're so incredibly smart and charismatic, and they love to play in the bow waves. So as the ship is moving forward through the water, we set off these waves sort of to the sides of us, rolling out to the left and the right. And dolphins love to come up and swim through these waves, sort of jump around through them. It's almost like they're saying, hey, you know, humans, you think you're so cool, but you need a giant research vessel to come out here. We're doing it all on our own. Just amazing experiences. And okay, so I'm cheating a tiny bit here. I was on a research cruise that finished up in Cape Town, South Africa, and I was an offered an opportunity to go shark diving. So of course I said yes. So this experience wasn't technically part of a cruise, but nevertheless it was an amazing afternoon with great whites, literally an arm's reach away. So this was a small boat, like the kind we might have recreationally, and it had a cage that was tied to the side of it. So the humans were in the cage and the great whites were outside of it. I didn't actually take this picture, my friend did, but I was in the cage at the time. Just a, literally a mind-blowing experience. The last thing I want to stress about uh, being a marine scientist and going out on research vessels, ship time is actually really expensive. And what that means is that you're probably not going to be the only project who's out there on the ship with you. What that means is that going out to sea is inherently an international, I would say a global experience. Um, you wind up meeting people from all over the world who are on the sh same ship as you. You get to learn about their work, which is also often quite different from your own. And I consider myself so incredibly lucky to have gotten to work with and to know scientists from literally all around the globe, from Haiti to Iceland to India to South Africa to Japan, everywhere. And that is a truly, truly gratifying and educational experience. So I hope you have enjoyed this really quick sort of crash course into what it looks and feels like to do research out in the middle of the ocean. I've really enjoyed showing you some of my many thousands of pictures. So thanks for coming along with me. Mm -hmm.